Hey everyone, uh, Delif here, and I'm excited to share with you that I'm going to do a follow-up on the Logic Rail Technologies uh, EFX16. This is their high current version. And what this allows you to do is instead of each circuit being dedicated to just one LED, now each circuit out of those 16 can have as many LEDs as you want. Really, theoretically, well, I mean up to a certain limit of like 250 milliamps per circuit, which is a lot of lights, right? But now you could have like a whole street of like sodium vapor lamps and they all come on at the same time and you have a, you have a kind of a lot more flexibility in my opinion. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this is and uh, find out what it can do. So let's open this thing up and see what we have. Again, this is the LE16HC, that's high current. Uh-huh. Um, it does come with resistors. So if we open this thing up, let's see if we can. Um, basically what I just read you. Um, comes with an instruction manual. Notice that it has the high current version, resistors required, version 1.2. Uh, pretty detailed description of how to wire out your LEDs, um, how to mount and install the unit. Um, let's keep going here. Yes, indeed. We have the power adapter so that you can feed power to the unit. Um, a Ethernet an Ethernet cable, which would be the LCC connection to power it, and here we have the actual board on the side, and uh, you can see that it has 16 outputs, master on off. So this would be if you manually want to control these things on input power to feed the circuits, and then your two LCC connections. I'm going to go ahead and wire out some circuits here and as well install a, uh, connect this to an, a demo LCC system and let's see what we can do. All right, here we are. Let's go ahead and test out this board. What I've done is connected in four different kinds of lights to each of the circuits. So I got circuits one, two, three, four. In the first one, I have a single LED circuit. Here's a twin LED head of some type, another twin LED head. And this particular um, is on a single circuit. It's actually each of these heads has two LEDs, so there's a total of eight LEDs driven by this single, just this one circuit here. So that demonstrates that you can go all the way from a single LED to a lot of LEDs, whatever it takes to get uh, the effects that you're looking for. Um, other than that, it's pretty easy to hook this up. Power comes in through this power jack, and then of course we've got your LCC network connections. Okay, let's jump over to the computer real quick here. Okay. We're going to look at the uh, configuration interface. Uh, for this unit uh, going through a gateway and of course JMRI identification there's nothing too exciting there logic real technologies light EFX 16 revision level uh, device settings this gives the name that you have for the, the device you can set this however you like and nothing too exciting there this is where most of your work will be done and if we open this up just a little bit You'll see that we have our lights 1 through 7 and then 8 through 16. And this is where you can configure each one. So you can put a description in there for each of the lights. This is the event that will make the light activate, turn on, or deactivate, turn off. Um, this is a setting to allow dimming. If they're a little bit too bright for you, you can dim them down. It's kind of nice. You don't have to mess with the resistors. And here's where you get to choose all your different effects. you got a fade in, blinking phase A and B, pulse phase A and B, fast blink phase A and B, strobe, double strobe, Wow. three different fires, a fusee, welding both blue and white, uh, so you can simulate the, the, the colors of uh, a welding process, photographers. The classic one is more of the back in the day when they had like the... The, the flash and then it fades out like it's some sort of a chemical flash versus the modern one is more of your strobe flash. Mercury vapor lamp, I gotta say this is one of my favorites when you give it the command to turn on it you know it starts off very dim and then you can see how it heats up over time. Oh yeah. Different choices on fluorescent tubes, random and then you even have a bathroom, not totally sure what that's about, rotary beacon bunch of emergency strobes, and then you have your different traffic light systems that you could set up. Meep, meep. And finally, there's also a chase light system with up to six lights. So a lot of choices. Like anything else, you just select whatever you might want, and then you hit right, and then it has that program, and it'll immediately take action. 
you can tie it together with other lights. For instance, if you have um, a traffic light system, you might want to have it follow the previous. There you go. Accessory decoder address to toggle the light. You can set that up to whatever accessory decoder address if you prefer to use DCC to control it. Auto timer. Um, notice this is for each of the lights. So you can set it up differently for each of the lights. Kind of cool. And then there's some global settings, DCC address to trigger, trigger programming. So this is where most of your work will be done as you program in your, your lights. So that's the configura uh, configuration information. Let's jump back over to the layout and take a look at some of the lights. And I think that'll do it for this segment. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. All right, and here we can see that the lamps are on and functioning just fine. Actually, this guy didn't, and I don't know what the deal is. I played with it for a bit, and I'm not going to worry about it. So we only have three circuits that work. One, two, number three is not functioning right now, and four. By the way, if you look carefully, you will see that the polarity on these lines changes. Um, these connectors here, by the way, they're not from Woodland Scenics. Um, I bought them online, an eBay seller. Really, they're just JST 2.5 two-pin connectors. Any of those will work. But I incorrectly assumed that the polarity was standardized. Um, it is not. The light EFX has positive plus on the left and then negative on the right. So I'd wired red to positive. Obviously, that's not what the case is. So you can see I did a bunch of fixes here to flip the polarity. But other than that, wiring was pretty simple. Now there's different ways you can uh, turn on and off these functions. Right now, by default, all the outputs are set to accessory decoder 99. So if I hit on my DCC system, accessory 99, and I press one or two, which is on my system, how to turn it off and on, through the DCC system, I can turn on and off each of these lamps. Okay, I dimmed some of the lights, and what I want to do is show you some of the cool effects that come with this. So, um, there's a blinking that you can do, and uh, you can turn it on and off. That would be great for some sort of a traffic light or something. Uh, there's a pulsating version of it. Uh, what else do they have? A fast blink as well. And by the way, they have um, A and B phases on this. So you could have, you know, when this is on, the other side will be off or whatever. Lots of cool effects here. One of my favorites I came across here. Yeah, fluorescent tube, a bad fluorescent tube. So I'm going to go ahead and write that there. In fact, you know what I'll do is I'm going to go over to light number four and I'm going to put a bad fluorescent tube, bad fluorescent tube type two. You can see that, you know, maybe this is a little bit more of the low rent district. And another one that I really enjoyed, which I'll put on light two, the ones with the double head, is the mercury vapor lamp. So if I write that one, you'll see that it dims, you know, comes up dim. And then as the, you know, simulating the mercury vapor, as it comes up, it gets brighter and brighter. Really cool effect. I love it. There's still more effects in here. I don't know if I want to go through all of them right now. Now when it comes to wiring, this is set up for individual circuits. But sometimes there's cases where it would make sense to have um, all these wires come from a remote location. And uh -huh. uh, for those of you who've done much LCC work, the 10 conductor cable ribbon, ribbon cable is a... Uh, it's a great way to move I.O. or signals from one part of the layout to another. So Logic Real Technologies has this EFX16 output adapter. Okay. And the idea here is it converts the outputs into one ribbon cable. So you could bring that over to, say, like a traffic intersection where there might be a lot of wiring. And this thing just slips right into uh, the connector on the end here, or it could be either direction, of course. And it converts then these eight outputs into a, a 10 conductor ribbon. So there you have it. Quick little walk around the Logic Rail Technologies Light EFX 16 yeah. high current version. More information can be found in the manual. Um, a lot of cool effects. Personally, I'm excited to see uh, some applications on this on my own layout where, you know, where you want to do some animation, create some more interest. 
I think this has a lot of potential, particularly on folks who have a, a scene, a super neat detailed scene that they want to really bring to life with some lighting. Anyway, there you go. We'll catch you next time.